Okay, guys, as promised, here we are, and we're going to do question 13 from the circuits quiz. And I've already set it up for you. I've written down all the values for the batteries and for the resistors. Now, generally, uh, you can solve most, most of circuit questions with uh, Ohm's law. You can usually use V equals IR uh, as well as long as you know how to add up resistors and parallel versus series you're usually in good shape you usually can figure these things out without the need for anything like Kirchhoff's law but Kirchhoff's law comes in really important when things get a little more complicated especially when you see more than one battery and you start saying well geez I, I don't really know which way this whole thing wants to go I, I can't quite tell what uh, the direction of all the currents should be so how do I figure it out so in this case that's what I'm going to talk about and what we're talking about here is using a combination of what we call the junction rule which is just that uh, the there is a sum of all the currents that are going towards a junction meaning a, a place where I have maybe three or more wires meeting at the same spot so that's really all I'm talking about there and also the Kirchhoff's law is also sometimes called the loop rule which is just simply that I can add up all the voltage drops and gains around a loop and they will always be equal to zero really important thing to use so let's go through the steps of how to solve this type of problem because as soon as you look at this you go oh okay I've got some things in parallel I've got more than one battery. This is weird. I'm going to have to figure this out using what Mr. Gill has just told me. So let's just see what we can do. So first things first. The first thing you're going to do here is you're going to try to figure out uh, which direction the currents are going to go for the problem. Now, what you're trying to figure out here is just what you think they will be. You might be wrong, and I think that's the important thing to take away from this is that you could be wrong. So when we're doing this, keep that in mind. So here I'm just gonna draw my currents. I'm gonna look at I1 moves around here from this. It's a 19 volt battery. So that seems to make sense that it would move in that direction of that. And then it would meet this junction. Now the question is what would happen here? I'm gonna make a guess. So I'm gonna say that the junction goes this way and then this way. So when it comes down here, it turns. We have this current going like that. And then this guy comes around across this battery, against this battery, but I, I had to choose one direction and no matter what, I'm going to go against some batteries. So I've got my kind of thing set up. Now, I'm just going to draw in the corner here the circuit layout so that we know what we're talking about here. We've got the, basically something like that. And when you think about it, you've got to think about all the different junctions you have. Not sorry, sorry, not junctions, but the different loops you have. We have two junctions. We've got a junction here, and here that we can look at and what you'll notice and uh, is that it won't matter which junction you look at you're still going to get the same thing going on but for a moment first let's look at the loop so I have one comes around like that we'll call that junction uh, sorry I keep saying it junction we'll call that the loop that's loop number one here you see following that current I got loop two and then, of course, I, I've got the loop that goes all the way around um, on the outside. That's, that's a loop as well. So I actually have three loops, two junctions, three loops. Now, to solve this problem, here's what I'm going to tell you. To solve, to solve, to solve, dot, 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 you need two loops plus one junction that's what you need oops erase that there I mean, that looks a little more like what I'm trying to write one junction that's what you need not you don't need now you notice I've got three loops so I could create three equations let me tell you this you don't need it you don't need it what you need are two loops and one junction so I've taken the time to uh, kind of go through this already I'll just pop up there's the three equations that I came up with. Now, let's look at them for a moment. First, 
Now pick any junction you want. Let's look at that. I'll pick, say, A right over here. Junction A, what am I saying? I have I1 coming in and then it splits apart because the, both those currents go away. Notice they go away from it, which means this guy was the original current and then it split into I3 and I2. So I can write this as I1 equals I2 plus I3. That makes sense. If I look down here, look at B. It's the same thing. Look at that. I came towards it with an I3. Also an I2 came towards the junction, so that would be I2 plus I3. And then that became, it equals I1. So it doesn't matter which junction I look at. I'm going to get the same equation here. So that's my first equation. I1 equals I2 plus I3. Now then the next one, I had to pick one of the loops. I chose loop number one. So you can see what I'm doing here. I start off, and I have to remember that if I'm going from a negative to a positive, if my current is going across in that way, this is a gain. This is a gain. But you'll notice over here, here's my positive, here's my negative. My current is going this way. This is a loss. And I have to make sure of that when I'm following around the loop of the currents that I have chosen. Now remember, I chose these currents. I don't know if they're going in the right direction. I have no idea. I'm going to find out. And I'll show you when we do all the math how you can find out. So here we go. Starting in this corner, I get 19 volts positive. I lose the voltage drop across this resistor. That's six times my current I1. Then I turn the corner. I cross R4. There we go. I That's I3 times R4. R4 is only one ohm. So that's just simply minus I3. Then I cross my 2 volt battery, that's minus 2 volts. Come around the corner, here I got minus 4 times I1, and that whole thing, I've completed the whole loop back to my beginning, and that whole thing equals 0. So then I got the same thing going around, and what did I use? I used actually, in this case, a uh, loop, I didn't label it here, but loop number, let's call it over here, loop number 3. So in that case, loop number three is going all the way around the whole thing. And you can see how I did it, 19 volts. I won't go through the whole thing, but as I went around here, I also had a minus six volts because once again, I am going in the wrong direction across this battery. So this battery is actually losing, uh, it's a voltage drop. Okay, so now what do I do with it? Um, this is quite simply a system of equations. So my guess is that you wouldn't have too much trouble doing this. Uh, the way I did it is that I said, okay, let me see, I, I'm taking equation one, I said I3 is equal to I1 minus I2, and then this whole thing, I will plug into here, and then get my two new equations. And uh, when you do that, what happens? Well, you're going to get, uh, for this one, you'll get 17 minus 11 I1, plus I2 equals zero. And then this back here, if, once you add up your voltages and your eyes and everything, you get 13 minus 10 I1 plus four I2. And I'm just looking to do something to cancel these out. I get, I'm, I'm gonna use elimination. Once again, you can do any method you want. This is a system of equations. This is simple math that you should know how to do. So what I ended up doing is I multiplied the top by Four and I got 68 minus 44 I1 plus 4 I2 equals 0. And at the bottom, I got my 13 minus 10 I1 plus 4 I2. I should put the I2 here, shouldn't I? Sorry about that. Equals 0. And then all I got to do is add these two equations up, and I end up with 81 minus 54 I1 equals 0, which means I can solve for I1, and I end up getting 3 over 2 amps. So there's my first current. To solve the next one, all I need to do really is I need to take this I1 and plug it in, let's say, into here. I could plug it into there. So I'd have, let me see, that would become 17 minus 11 times 3 over 2 plus I2 equals 0, which means I can solve for I2. Now here's the interesting thing that happens. I2 will end up equaling negative one half amps. Now, what does that negative mean? Think about that for a moment. What does the negative mean? 
Okay, giving yourself time to think. Well, let's think about what I've done here. My claim is that it's negative a half amp squared across here, which means that my direction is wrong. I chose this direction, but in reality, this actually must be moving in the opposite direction. This must be the direction that the current is really going for I2. So even though I wrote it and I said, oh, it looks like it's going to go this way, when you solve the equation, you will find yourself corrected and you'll find out exactly what the direction of that current must be. So you don't have to worry about getting it right the first time. The solution will end up solving it for you. Okay, so lastly, I've got my I2, I got my I1. Well, shoot, all I have to do is say I1 equals I2 plus I3, and I can solve for I3 by plugging in this guy, oops, there, and this guy, and there, and I will end up getting an I3 equal to 2 amps. And that's it. Now that I've got it, not only have I solved for all the different currents, but I also now at the same time confirmed by whether the answers were positive or negative if the direction that I chose initially is right or wrong. And that's it. That's how you solve those kind of questions. I hope that helps you. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, always just talk to me, send me an email, or talk to me on Agamotto. Okay, guys, later.